So here are two microwave magnetrons that we'll be testing. The one on the left is the uh, defective unit or suspected defective unit that I pulled out of the uh, General Electric microwave. <clears throat> the one on the right is the uh, one that uh, arrived today as, as the uh, new replacement. So we'll be testing both of these units and to see what the differences are. The important thing on ordering a new replacement is the model number you see there, the 2M246. You'll see the replacement has the same number. There are some other numbers there on the label as well. Those aren't as important as the actual 2M246 number that you see. Those other numbers refer to production dates and that sort of thing. So really what's important is that main number you see there in addition to the overall form factor of the magnetron itself, meaning it's got the same time of base, same method in which it bolts into the unit. These are pretty much all the same depending on what microwave you're working on. They all have a magnetron and they're pretty similar in appearance. So we'll go ahead and look at how we're going to test these using a standard ohmmeter, which you're going to turn on to the ohms selection. So with any open circuit or with the probes not touching each other, you're going to get an overload condition or basically a range that's outside of what the meter can actually measure. So again, this is the suspect unit on the left. We'll be checking resistance measurements here, uh, measuring the primary circuits, or basically the circuit between these two connectors, and measuring that primary circuit with respect to the ground or the case of the, the unit itself. So we'll see what we have here. Checking the primary circuit across these two connectors. You see that we basically have 0.1 ohms or basically 0 ohms, which means that's a full connection just like if you were to put these probes together, which is which is what you need, but that should be a good unit right here. So we'll go ahead and check that compared to ground, which you should have no reading. And we see if we do that, we're actually coming up with 2.3 mega ohms, which is a fairly high amount of resistance, although you should have no resistance. I mean, you should have full resistance between this circuit and the case basically like that is what you should read when you're doing this so basically that ind indicates a basically a, a, a somewhat uh, shorted uh, circuit to the case itself uh, which is causing this unit to malfunction and not work correctly so I'll move on to the replacement new unit We'll again check the primary circuit of the magnetron. And again, basically 0.1 ohms or zero if we hold it long enough. And that's what you want. If you have an overload condition or any amount of resistance really over, I would say half an ohm, 0.4 ohms at the most, uh, then there's a problem with the unit. Checking the primary circuit to the ground or the case, you can see that's overload or basically nothing measured there and that's what you want. You don't want any kind of short to ground or through the case. So that basically indicates this new unit is good and the old unit is in fact bad.